Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Tendai Mudunge, based here in St. John's, Newfoundland. I have been living here for the past eight years. I moved here in 2012, but in 2016 something special happened. I got exposed to the bachata for the first time, and I it was in Vancouver at the time. And I've gone on to invest a lot of time, a lot of effort in learning the dance, understanding the mechanics, and understanding how you can share that experience to other people. So today you have the privilege, I'm going to present a show to you, Bachara is taking over. So this segment is sponsored by Arts NL, it's part of their fund for art in a time of COVID. So we'll be doing the dance component of that grant. We have 45 minutes of action-packed uh, awesomeness prepared for you to enjoy right in the comfort of your home through your device. So the show itself uh, is titled Bachata is Taking Over. So the first question I would answer is what is Bachata? What are the things you get from dancing this dance? Where can you access this dance to, to learn more, explore more, to more birds? There's only so much I can do in this video. I also give you something to to learn at home, so to be a small mini routine that I've prepared. Just walks through the basics and everything that you get as you are working through the dance. And then you're going to get to see me teaching some of my students, and we have a few featured guests from around the world, from USA, from Canada, and from Mexico too. And they are going to be talking about some of the issues that come with bachata, some of the things you benefit from the dance, the different styles of bachata. So sit back, relax, and uh, let's have some fun. So the first question I'll start with, uh, what is what is bachata? You know, with bachata, because bachata is sentimental, it's about feeling, it's about um, romance, sometimes, uh, you know, bad romance, <laughs> uh, depending on the song. Yes. But itself, it's a dance uh, that is, I'll say it's fairly easy to learn. So some people dance it socially, they just learn enough to, to be comfortable, to work through a song. And some people actually learn routines, they do choreography, they go on to perform. It's always important to be uh, in the culture. So to understand what is the genre of bachata and just to share that. After you, you dance and you enter, spread it the way you want yes but the idea is to spread and to come back to the roots yeah of the style so then uh the art of dance it's really something in process yeah it comes from the music it comes from the body comes from everywhere from the heart from the soul so what i'm going to do today is mostly towards the social dancing part so I'll show you something that you can do by yourself at home or that you can just do to any music and then I'll also show that now we're supposed to be in our bubbles, we're supposed to be social distancing as much as possible but I also have a component in this show where you actually see the dance now danced in Patawek so that's the fun part for most people that's the enjoyable part because now you're not just dancing by yourself you're actually communicating with someone as you're working through the routine you're like working together as a team and there's just, just a magical part to that feeling. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are many, many, many styles of bachata. Um, it started from Dominican Republic as a tradition. We call that the traditional styles, usually a little more footwork, more uh, happy songs, like most of the time. Uh, say all and then it evolved into modern style and then recently the sensual style um, it was created in from Spain by uh, Corky and uh, Judith and uh, they fusion as we talked about fusioning different styles right uh, so they a big I guess influence of their this new style is from Suk and Suk is a style where there's a lot of body movement and a lot of lead and following so the leader uh, should be able to do like a small lead maybe just like push you over a little bit and then the girl has to go through those motions of being oh, moved right so that aspect of uh, lead and following and um, just lots of body movement uh, versus versus a lot of footwork that's I guess that distinguish uh, sensual bachata in 
the other styles um, the music are usually much slower to allow you to go through that body movement very slowly and intricately so uh, yeah and it's usually sensual very romantic very uh, nice like slow songs so yeah definitely love that <laughs> no, it's so myself, my journey in bachata started in 2015, 2015, 2016. I was in Vancouver at the time. I was just going there for, I was living there for four months, just looking for something to do one day. And then I ended up at this studio. You know, it was actually in downtown Vancouver at the time. So I just saw the class, it was salsa at the time. I did the class and slowly, slowly I just started to explore more of the dance, just dance with more people. It's like, a, it's like a lifelong learning process. Even myself, now I've been dancing for almost five years. There's always something come up, there's always something to learn. So I find the more I've traveled in different places, interacted with different people, there's always something that comes up that I learned from someone. And then in 20... Two, two, years, two years ago, I started my own uh, dancing company, so it's called Chabula. So like I said, the dancing is now, bachata is now all over the world, including here in St. John's. And there's many other people besides me who also teach the dance. But myself, what I try to more focus more is, uh, I try to focus on the average person. Someone who's like me, who's just looking for something to do. So that I give you an option for something that you can do. So the way I always do my classes, they're always all levels, all, for all levels. I always cater to different levels. I, I try to sequence my class in my classes in one hour sessions. So when I do one hour sessions that way, I try to I can get three or four things that people can learn. And within those three or four things, I always pick something for people who are getting started. We always get for something that's people are getting advanced, but I just stop it from being repetitive that way. So now, now that we know there's different styles of bachata, there's the Dominican bachata, there's the central bachata, and people dance it for many reasons, and there's a lot of things that are gained from the process of investing your time in learning this dance. So one thing that I enjoy myself personally is just the creative process of be it like I'm preparing for a class, be it I'm dancing with people socially, just to get the idea of to say, this is what I'm thinking of doing, just giving it a try. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. So, to, so right now I'm just going to, to show you behind the scenes of the process that I would do myself. So it's more like a rehearsal. I'm, plan I'm planning to teach a class for some of my students for August. So now we're in the time of the pandemic, we can't really partner dance. But this one is more like a routine for people to do. It takes a bit of, it takes a few elements from the Dominican. It takes elements from the central bachata. And it also includes the musicality of the dance. That way people get the full experience. That's one thing that I always try to focus on. So when you do a class, I actually stick to one hour. I try to teach maybe three to four things for people to do. And then in those three to four things, they can get the different elements. But I know I can't teach people in one day. And then as part of trying to grow the dance, I have to make sure that my content is open to all levels, it's open to everyone. So I'm just going to show you. So for me, I'm always thinking like, I always look at what I did in the past, what worked, what didn't work. And I also try to reflect to people who teach me to see these are the things that worked when they were teaching me. And I try to always also challenge myself too. Because I have to like learn from my students also to learn to see like this is what they're getting out of the process. What is working, what is not working and that just comes with time. So this routine itself is uh, it's a mixture of uh, the two styles. So usually every song when it starts, it starts with like a slow part. So during the slow part or the introductory part, you tend not to dance too, uh, too, too quickly. You just, uh, so the counts are still 1 to 8. But rather than counting it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, you tend to slow the counts down based on your movement. So for example, if I give an example, the song that I'm going to use today is by DJ Soul Tricks. It's called Promises. So when the song starts, it's very slow. Like this is like the romantic part. I know we talked Bachara is about romance. Bachara is sentimental. So during the slow part, we'll just start nice and easy. We'll start going side to side. So we'll do our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
But one thing that I try to challenge people early on is try to get the arms working too, boys. That's how you get it flavor. That's how your dance looks nice. Boys, you don't want to be just dancing with your feet. You want to be using as many muscles as you can, your brain, everything. So the quick, quick, the earlier we can do that, the more we build those memory, muscle, mem that muscle memory. So the first part, what we went to do, we call this contra body movement. So what you're trying to do, you're trying to get the opposite arm and the opposite leg to move in the same direction. So for, I'm going to start with my left leg for myself. So I'll leave my left arm just by my waist level here. So the first count is to start like one, two, three, four five six seven eight so if i do from the side you're going to pay attention now uh, how my arm is straight and what i also try to do what i encourage people to do you want to add a bit of drama to your dance so rather than just moving the arm one way you're also following the arm using your head too so that way it would look like one two three four five six seven eight so the more risk you can add early on the better it looks that's how everyone is different boys not everyone can dance the same so if i do it one more time just the first part it would look like one two three four five six seven eight so you can even add flavor to it so you see how i do one two three four five six seven eight that way you can mix it up so when it comes to like arm styling Sometimes like it works both ways. So sometimes when you're learning something you're trying to build your confidence So you want sort of a routine that you can repeat But eventually that becomes boring and you want to try something different So now that we have our first part out of the way at some point the music is going to start So when the music starts that's the time for us to to groove to music So one thing that I like to focus on early on both I found when people were teaching me They didn't focus a lot on this other part is the musicality. So when it comes to the musicality you have the option of slowing down the dance. You have the option of dancing to your regular tempo of eight counts. Or you have the option to speed up the dance. And you have the option to speed it up very quickly. And then there's also breaks too. So that part, it's never, it's not consistent. It's up to what the musician is thinking all the time. Both the musicians too, they are trying to make the songs different. That way they give their audience something different, a different feel all the time. So essentially the dancers we need the music and the musicians need us so it's like uh, we're playing together there so we just start once the music starts so we start with our first tempo so with eight counts so for the other eight counts we are doing eight things so that's our first but first basic so the first basic so when you walk you want to be nice and stretched but when you dance you want to be you want to get shorter but the second you get shorter that's how you help you get your hips to that's how you get your hips to play around you actually get your hips to play around by moving your knees up and down so let's start with our first basic so the second thing our arms usually at the start our arms they come with time you can do more fancy stuff and you can do nice nice pretty things but for a start today let's start easy so the arms are going to keep the most level here so our first basic we do it is a box so I usually like to like this one but sometimes when I get classes we get people who are dancing for the first time so we want to start like a common base for everyone and then we make it fancy afterwards but we want to start like at a nice common level for everyone so the first basic would look like this so it would look like one two three four five six seven eight so this is just the first base so if I do it from the side from the side with the arms too so we said nice and slow, we said one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then when we start that's when we do our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's just our first eight counts. So the next eight we're going to do something a bit challenging there. So instead of doing so with eight counts, four counts, usually we're working four counts at a time. So rather than doing four things in four counts, we're going to add an extra step there. So the people would call those the syncopated steps. So that way between two steps, you do something different. And that way you can do your five things in four counts. So it would look like, so you see how I did my one, two, we do a kick here. And then instead of doing three, we do like an end here. And then we step to the side three, and then we close on four. So the whole thing would look like this. So it would look like 
one two and three four and then for the, for the next one now this is our second challenge so we said we can do slow we can slow it down or we can quickly move it quickly that's how you add flavor to your dance so the way we do this one uh, i like this one someone told me this and i like it i find it's a good way to play around when you dance so usually i try to teach people to do the body roll early on so the booty roll people know in this one but what we're going to do we're going to do a booty roll and then we're going to do like a like shake shake we're going to do like a syncopated step so the five is our same same way we prepare for a booty roll so we do our five but instead of doing six seven eight we just start shaking from side to side and then we come back and close here so one thing that i want you to notice when i do it from the side you notice how when i push to the side see how if you are like upright there's no drama there but if you push to the side and you lean forward a little bit so for your arms for now i'm just going to bring them here and then you start you get more control this way and then it just adds flavor to your dance so if i do the full, the next full thing together it would look like so he said one two and three four and then you see how i push to the side five six seven and eight so that's our first set of eight there so you know as always i'm teaching people here we've done our slow part easy stuff for everyone to start and then i'm challenging people that way and i find that's how i get to keep my classes open to everyone eight you come to tap so one thing i always tell people with music so if you respect the one and the five everything else can be a gray area but as long as you're hitting your one and your five it means it's clear where you start and even if everything is shaking between but you can at least don't compromise on the one and the five that's tip for the day so if i do the whole thing it looks like this so it would look like one two three four five six seven eight and then the challenge so we'll do our one two and three four and then you do your five six seven eight but then when we're going to uh, let me do it from the other side so if i do it from the back so i'm starting with this one again so you see how i do my one two three four five six seven eight one two and three four and then you do your five six seven eight and then you close so when you do this part here just try to like lean a little forward a little bit and the movements they don't have to be too big so essentially that's so that's the difference between like the top dancers and people who are still learning it's the control so anyone can do this but all you're trying to do is just trying to isolate this part so you see how by leaning so the smaller the movement the, the easier it is to control and then you come back to close so when you do this so the breaks you so you have three options so that you can sl- just to feel before i finish just to go back again so when it comes to musicality so that you can slow the music down you can go faster than the music or you can do the sync and period steps but as long as within the one to eight so this takes time for me sometimes i know the song sometimes it just comes through practice and then you just get excited and and some music are some songs are faster some songs are slower and then the other thing that comes with the musicality sometimes you get breaks so when you do this for the second time so rather than doing our finish this way we're going to hit a break so so for the break you get like a pause in the music for four so your challenge is just to try to do something something dramatic for those eight counts and then we start again so if i do the whole thing the first one and the break for the second one so the first cycle it would look like one two three four five six seven eight one and two three four and then i do my five six seven eight and then when i do the second time so it's one two three four five six seven eight one and two three four and then this time now the break is going to come so you can do anything you want dramatic you can even do like a dab so anything anything is fair game but just to get the idea just to get it into your mind that just to get it into your mind that you're dancing for the music so you might be able to do all these things all the fancy things you might have all the moves but it takes a lot of skill to have the discipline to know that i just don't do this because i feel like doing it but to do it in sync with the music and at the end of the day 
it's social dancing most people are trying to enjoy the process but these are the things that i try to focus in my classes to make sure that everyone gets the full experience so i'll do it to music but if you're interested in more of this you can get in touch with me through my facebook page instagram or you can even give me my, my call on my number 709-699-3983 so take care Is this Bachata calling? I hear Bachata is taking over. Okay, that's all right. Let me let me go. Let me go. I always enjoyed the creative process of coming up with a routine, trying it out and figuring out the different elements, the musicality, the different moves. But what is even more enjoyable is getting to share this routine in, when we do workshops, when we do classes. Because this is where we actually get the chance to make an impact, to bring joy to someone's day. We've been having events and classes for the past two years. We've managed to attract a big group. So the process for me every time we do a class is always the first important thing since I understand the subject very well and I've invested in a lot of time in learning it, dancing it. So I have to find a way to try to simplify it so that everyone in, in, in our class gets what we're trying to teach, what you're trying to do for that day. So that involves me being very organized, giving a good grip on what I want to teach and also trying to figure out the things that might trouble people and find ways and tricks to make that part repetitive but also keep people engaged as we are doing it. And then the second part, I used to have a challenge with this when I started. Sometimes I'll suppose I get to see something and I get to prepare it for a long time. So for me I would have I might it might take longer once we actually start teaching it. So I tend to end up breaking it. So sometimes I would have the routine, we slowly build it up. And I tried to pick maybe three or four things. So the focus with this routine was definitely getting people to get to see the transitions between the slow part and the start and when the music speeds up after the first eight counts. And then the second big thing was just to get people enjoy simple steps and not necessarily be used to doing like a lot of people I remember myself when I started was the basic one is always going side to side with your four counts and then you come back the other side. So because you do it so often, you can easily fall into that trap of doing that so many times. So that's why I tried to get people started with the box. And it actually turned out to be a very good class. The feedback was very positive. And as always, I try to get there before everyone is there so that I'm set up. At least, I always do that for good luck. To always look organized. So that's why I always show up early practice the routine to music just to make sure that I'm in my zone and um, I'm ready to perform at my best and then once people come usually our events they start a little bit late everyone tends to take a bit of their time and then I find usually once we start coming because I'm teaching at the front people tend to see what I'm trying to do it just takes usually a few minutes to get everyone warmed up to get everyone comfortable and to feel like no one is watching with them so that doesn't always that always works better if we have a mirror boss i can they can see what i'm doing and i can see what they're doing too but when we did it at Panama park both of COVID, we have to social distance there was no mirror there but it actually turned out to be a good experience too uh everything that i had planned turned out very well there's a lot of smells in the class and everyone you're just happy to be dancing again and that's always the big thing i think that's what it's all about just to be able to go through that process of thinking up of something, making a plan, doing the routine myself, repeating it so many times, and actually getting to bring that to other people to see. And I find over the years, the more we do events, the more we do classes, that's how more people know about the dance, that's how more people get excited about the dance, and 
just motivates me to even keep doing better so the things that we have done so far the central bachata and the dominican bachata routine that is more like a routine that people would do in a performance or something that i'll teach is warm up to class or just to get people comfortable dancing by themselves but what a lot of what attracts a lot of people to the dance and what really makes the dance stands out where the chemistry really comes out is when you dance with someone else so the idea between partner work essentially dancing you can almost say dancing is special dancing bachata or when you start dancing partner work you could treat it as a sport but the thing that's unique with this sport you're not really competing against another opponent so in most sports you'll be trying to compete against someone or be you'll be working as a team with your other teammates to try to beat another team but when it comes to partner dancing you're just trying to come together with your partner so all the time people dance at different levels some people are still getting started some people have more experience but the whole idea irregardless of your experience you're just trying to come together most songs are three three between three to five minutes so you're just trying to come back between that three to f- come together for that three to five minutes and share this common experience as you work through the movements so like anything that you do there's always a technique to everything so the whole idea with partner work you have since you're trying to move together is one unit it's very difficult for two people to be making decisions or to be giving directions to say this is what we are doing next this is what we are doing next so essentially you did someone who's like a lead and someone who's a follow so in some of the clips that i'm showing here these are some of the people that i've danced with in the past that i've done performances with some of my students that i teach in most of the times myself i dance as a lead i've been trying to follow more so when the dance started or the traditional part usually the men would lead and the females would follow but it's now starting to change sometimes you see men dancing together sometimes you see females dancing together or sometimes you, you see especially i find this with people who teach they do the role play where they switch so that they just get a better understanding of the things that you're looking for the signals that you're getting so when it comes to partner work the like i the way i like to see it myself because when you are dancing as the lead so for what i usually do myself where i'm usually leading i sort of even have an idea in advance of what i'm trying to do so rather than doing what i feel like doing this is what i try to get most people to do in class i find a lot of people that i've danced with in the past to be experienced or they are still learning they try to follow this similar template so ideally you try to find out the comfort level for the person that you're dancing with and you just work through some of the things that will be considered basics and then you work towards the more complicated stuff but as you're doing each and everything you can see whether you the other person likes who likes the certain moves that you're trying to do so myself i like dips i like the sensual bachata so as you can see from the clips but not everyone likes it so i'm not going to be with the first person that i dance with next time i'm not going to try a dip right off the bat so i might try with a small dip and if i see they're liking it if i see they don't like it that's how i choose what i do to do next and myself the way i try to style my dancing i had a background where i danced a lot of kizomba before and from talking to a lot of people a lot of people say a lot of people they find a lot of people to be very rough and a lot of people to use a lot of force they feel like when you're dancing with someone you're like restricted you do you can't really do much but myself what i try to do i try to lead more with my my eyes so that if we connect visually and i also try to position my body so that the person knows what i'm trying to do next that way i don't have to hold them down with my arms and that just gives them freedom to make the dance beautiful and to add flavor with their own styling so that's how i would try to do my dance but it's not everyone who likes my style so part of the thing that i try to encourage people to look out for or when i'm socially dancing myself so i know my comfort level what i'm looking to get out of the process so i try to quickly establish whether the person is trying to get out of the process and i try to dance within their own style so when you do classes when you do workshops usually do like a mini routine like the one i showed at the start is our warm up and then we get people to partner work afterwards so the way i would do the mini routine i'll try to incorporate steps that are going to use for partner work 
that way when i start showing people the partner work part already they know what to do with their feet and then we tend to rotate when we do classes so myself when i most of classes that i've gone to i've never really gone to classes with a partner so one thing that's one thing i was trying to focus on myself was i know some people come as partners but i try to get people to switch as much as possible when you're doing classes or when you're doing just social dancing so the whole idea with social dancing you just get access to this friendship circle where you're people with people who like what you're doing and you all get to share memories on the dance floor so myself i started with the partner work in vancouver in 2015 as i had mentioned earlier and then i learned a lot in montreal toronto and even in St. John's people that I dance with. And since we have a good university here, we also get a lot of people coming in as exchange students. So Lena, she really taught me a lot of stuff and she's the first person I was able to dance with consistently at a higher standard. And I found I actually improved just from dancing with them. So I always encourage people to do the same thing. And then, so the, the, when you start dancing with partner work part, so you could be dancing socially, would also be dancing with performances so some of the clips that i'm showing we actually did performances in many locations throughout the st john's and as i had said bachara is taking over so with each and everything that we do we always grow from strength to strength more people get to see how the dance is danced and what you get out of the process and that's always the big motivation for me because there's been many positive things that came out from dancing be it the people that i met just boosting my own confidence in just a fun activity something to do something that you can always look forward to so i know myself when i'm dancing with people they're investing their trust in me and i also have to retain that process by being respectful making sure they have an enjoyable experience so there's only so much that i can talk about in the show but if you're interested in learning more of the dance so we're doing socials we're doing a lot of events throughout st john's sometimes in the summer we also try to do events outside and then in the winter i find that the winter is usually a good time because it's a bit cold outside and there's not as much to do so we tend to do a lot of events so we've even brought people to come from as far as montreal ottawa Toronto so we usually try to do maybe four to six big events that way people get exposed to a high level of dancing and they can see they can see it from people who are more experienced than me so people who even taught me and then just to keep the momentum so we do the big events and I also we do local events here so we try to I'm always one thing that I'm always thinking about how can we reach out to more people and how can we get more people outside my social circle to see the dance so as well, we've done events at places like the farmer's market we managed to do one at the rooms just before the pandemic so that one was really good because it was in a place where other people could see the dance just the common person they see it at a high level we also did a few events at the university too so those ones would be really good because the university is one place with high density of people in one location and we're also trying to reach out to other dance groups like the lindy lindy hope group so we actually did a good lindy charter with them so we'd have a bit of lindy hope and we'd also have bachata so like everything there's always two sides to everything so the thing that i focused more is the benefits to the dance what you get out of the process how you can dance it by yourself and in partner work but then there's also been other issues that have been coming up of late with bachata just be also just beyond newfoundland itself in some of the bigger cities so we actually have tanya she's i took some of her classes and i've gotten to know her. she's a professional dance teacher and performer based in toronto so she's going to talk about the difference between the dancing sensual and the sexuality of the dance was this one thing that always comes come seems to come up especially with the growth and more people seeing sensual bachata so i also have other people like nicole she's based in uh, la she's also going to talk about what you get out of the dance and some of what really attracted you to it, to the dance 
and then to finish off we're going to finish off with Tara so she is the dance doctor and she's also going to talk about the things that people take for granted but that really stop them from taking their dancing to the level to the next level so definitely it is an issue uh, nowadays in fact there's a lot of uh, I see a lot of comments and uh, on Facebook on social media about exactly this so the thing is when I teach sensual bachata I really really focus on what the actual lead and following is and if you actually learn it properly there is not a lot of gripping like I even tell the the uh, for the guys like for example you shouldn't be holding your full hand on her there is no need for it sometimes if you need to tell her to move all you need is a thumb or maybe one finger like you push and she's supposed to go like you don't have to like hold on to her and like shake her and move her that's not the idea um, the idea is the leader is guiding or suggesting uh, movements and then as a follower I have the choice to do it or not do it if you want to push me to one side you're like okay go that way and if I as a follower don't want to go well I don't want to go I don't go right so it's it shouldn't be like uh, forced right and a lot of the leading and following should be very done very respectfully um, there is nothing about sensual bachata sensual bachata to me is about the music and how uh, the connection the connection comes from the leader being able to suggest the move and the follower able to follow right so that's the connection right like I tell you to some do something it's like a, like a psychic I'm gonna tell you to do something now and somehow you know how to respond to it that's that's the beauty of it and it's so and it connects with the music it's not about forcing you to uncomfortable positions and definitely not about like gripping like there's no space between us and in fact uh, a lot of uh, I wish I can like yes. demonstrate right yeah, now yeah, yeah. so if you're uh, if, uh, if you want to lead uh, in isolation, let's say if you want the girl to be, I'm gonna stand up, show you. If you want a girl to do like a move like this, right? Yes. To move the rib cage, you don't hold on to her and like shake, after shake, shake. Like this. And if I'm going so close, if I'm hugging my partner like this, so then how should how can the girl go forward? There's no room, right? Then her movement is gonna be like this. So there has to be room between you and your partner. There's always, always room. There, there so has then, to be space for Jesus. I make all that movement, right? Yes. But then when you see people dancing in social, maybe like either they haven't uh, learned it properly. Uh, maybe they learned it from YouTube and YouTube, sometimes you miss out some. Not saying that you're not watching the right YouTube. It's just sometimes you miss out the details and the technique, right? So uh, there should be space between you and your partner to even execute half of these moves. So then when there's when when you're like so close with your partner, then it sometimes becomes sexual. Right? So that's that's where I think people are not learning the moves properly. They're not leaving it properly they're not following it properly uh, a lot of my beginner students they go out like dancing for the first time and they come back and they're like why is everyone like so close to me I said don't let them be so close to you if you're not comfortable right as a follower you have the choice to follow or not you're not being like uh, it's not like oh they squeeze you so close you can defend right you can like push them a little further away and as a leader you should understand okay she's not comfortable I'm gonna stay a little further away right so this is like a two-way street so it shouldn't get to a part where it's sexual it's sexual should go back like if you want to dance sexual bachata it should be in your bedroom or somewhere I'm not on a dance floor I don't like even if you're with your dance partner like even if you're with your lifetime partner if you're dancing with your life partner when you're on a dance floor it should still stay within the realm of like how sensual bachata should be Right. And I think sometimes like people watch so much YouTube, like there's so many YouTubes available and most of the Bachata Essential artists, they are life partners, right? So then of course they can do <laughs> something more than others, but then like the viewers don't necessarily uh, relate that, oh, they're a boy girlfriend, so that's fine. Or even husband and wife, they don't think that. They just think, oh, that's
that's sensual bachata. I'm gonna do this on the dance floor with the next girl I'm dancing with. So that's not right. So I think it's very important for teachers, uh, especially, because uh, we have the chance to talk to a big audience. We have the, I guess, responsibility to really uh, let people know that the real difference between sexual bachata and sensual bachata and not make it go that way because it becomes uncomfortable for everyone going social dancing and you don't want that this I'm looking for the sensual experience for the connection the movement the music the connection not a not nothing sexual right? I think um, a lot of people learn steps and they learn styling um, and they worry a lot about their own dancing which is important it's very important but the thing that I really harp on in my classes and that's really important to me is connecting to your partner um, especially in social dancing because everybody's a little bit different um, and so I really feel like that that sensitivity um, in the connection in the lead and the follow is super important in being able to enjoy yourself and express yourself while you're dancing because I always say to like I teach a lot of couples and I'm like if you're not gonna connect to one another you yeah. must you might as well just dance by yourself you know it's like you know looking at both you know like visually connecting physically connecting and so I do a lot of um, I, I teach a lot about that kind of developing that sensitivity to be able to um, successfully dance as a couple dance because I feel that dancing is just one of the most joyful things that you can do and and I think you know if there were more joyful people in the world uh, the world would be a better place and I think dancing is a great way to achieve that and I know a lot of people get into their head uh, a lot of them from a young age that they can't dance or they're not good at dancing, or they shouldn't dance um, for whatever reason. And I, I think that my, the, the special thing that I bring is being able to break things down um, and impart information in a way that makes everybody feel like, oh, okay, I can, I can do this. Definitely. And my dad was my very first dance partner, and I loved, loved dancing with him. And. Uh, I, I, I've always danced and I and I looked for a way to actually dance out at the nightclubs. When you go to Hollywood, they have a lot of clubs, but I wouldn't call any of that dancing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when I found salsa, I it opened up my eyes like, wow, this is where people actually go to dance, not not just to hit on people, not to get as many numbers as you can or go home with somebody. People were really there to enjoy the dance. And at the end of the song, when I danced my first dance, at the end of the song, I remember my partner just said, thank you, and walked away. And I almost had my jaw on the floor. I was like, wait, you're not gonna ask me for my number or ask to buy <laughs> This is amazing. <laughs> and from then I was hooked. I don't think I went back to the Hollywood clubs after that, not even one. Beating the short term or the long term. What is it that people actually gain from this experience of learning bachata, salsa, and developing their skills? Well, I think the more obvious ones are a healthy habit. So you have something to do every night of the week, at least in LA, we have dancing seven nights a week. Um, and you know that you can go and have a good sweat and socialize. And even though in the pandemic, that sounds terrifying, before the pandemic, it was very much welcome and a healthy practice, right? So you get exercise, you get a friendship circle. You're going to see a lot of the same faces over and over again when you go dancing because it takes time to learn. So you will make friends and uh, it's kind of like built into to the bigger picture, which I think is a really beautiful thing. And then something that I realized later is that you're learning a language that you can take anywhere in the world. So I, I've I had the good fortune to dance in Croatia and Italy and Spain uh, and France and I don't know French 
but I understand salsa. And when I go to a club and I dance with people from France, I have an instant connection with them that I would not have expected as a tourist. So it's this really big global picture and, and community that you get to be a part of that's a special bonus that I only realized later in life.